Hello all, how are we? Good, thank you. Cool. Hey Lee, good to see you and everyone else. All right, bit of an exciting week with the summit starting later on. So uh, with our agenda that we've got at the moment, uh, we have the proposal to provide infrastructure for Autoscaler. Uh, has everyone had a chance to uh, have a read through the email that uh, Silvestri sent over? Nope. Sorry, uh, I should have. I would be happy to repeat uh, what I've already <laughs> written in the email if you want to. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, so uh, basically um, the App Auto Scaler is um, a project that's um, already in the github.com slash cloud foundry um, account. So not an incubator, but in the full uh, organization. Um, it was <laughs> until now, I guess, a part of the extensions TMC. Um, it's a project that typically can be deployed um, uh, next to a CF CF4 VMs installation and then provides um, yeah, auto scaling capabilities. Basically, you can set auto scaling policies um, based on metrics, custom or container metrics or schedules, and then your application gets scaled um, horizontally with like a normal CF scale command would do. Um, yeah. It's the project, I don't know the exact history, but um, SAP and IBM have been longtime contributors to this project. IBM has recently scaled back uh, their contributions in, uh, in this project. And with that, um, basically the whole CI infrastructure, uh, release infrastructure is basically gone. Um, I've tried, for example, getting um, answers where the blob store for the release blobs is, um, who is, has access to that, but did not manage to find um, out where it is. So also on IBM side, there is no records of that. And so since we would like to revitalize this project to get um, uh, much needed updates um, mm. back in and do new releases um, with open source, also new features, um, we also think about that. Uh, we would like to, to have uh, a CI pipeline, uh, a release infrastructure back so that we can do this with, with quality, right? And our ask would be to the foundation and to you, the technical oversight committee is to provide uh, the auto scaler as a project of the CF foundation, um, such accounts and uh, resources. I, I wanna add just a little bit of context, which I also sent an email. <laughs> but uh, I just want people to understand. Um, so, the, so the reason why I pushed over to the TSC is that that's the right model. Um, mm -hmm. You all should be determining what are the policies, uh, rules, et cetera, for consumption of, uh, of you know, uh, shared CI infrastructure. Um, it's kind of your responsibility to figure out what those policies are. Um, in terms of 2021 remaining budget, um, you, there's plenty of space for this. So you don't have to worry about dollars. Mm -hmm. um, but think about this as just kind of the exercise of at least understanding the decision-making process. You, you know, you may do this one as just a simple, like, yes, check this off. Right. But just at some point you'll need to be very thoughtful about, um, you know, what, what projects get what amount of, um, I guess, infrastructure, which corresponds mm -hmm. to dollars. Cause there's going to, there is a hard cap on that. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Makes sense. I know Chip, you and I have been working on this project for just a little while to like do budgeting. And it was on my list of things to bring up with the TOC. It's just a lower down on my list than yep. working group formations and a variety of other things. There's a bit of a danger of us green lighting this before green lighting core Cloud Foundry moving over into the shared CI infrastructure. I think if the cost is low, like if, if of auto scalar testing, then it, it doesn't matter that much. Um, I think when when we had built the example budget for, for CI infrastructure, it did involve a few, one or two at least, kind of largest scale, like re reasonable scale, Cloud Foundry deployments that were permanent. So if the, basically if the shared, sorry, if Autoscaler can be tested against a medium sized deployed permanent Cloud Foundry that is also that can also be used for routing and CAPI testing 
um, I think I think we're in business. Like I think I'm essentially saying we can piggyback auto scalar testing on this permanent kind of staging environment. If that is not the case, and it needs some dedicated resources for it, I think we should reconsider it and and not greenlight it yet. Uh, but I'd be happy to use this as an excuse to build that permanent large-ish scale CF deployment and start start auto scalar testing against it and add others later. Maybe I can add something as well because I had a similar uh, thing on my agenda, uh, not really urgent at the moment, but uh, my team is currently working on what we call uh, systematic cloud controller performance tests. And with performance tests, I don't mean load tests, but I mean uh, evaluating the execution time of single API calls to find out uh, in um, inefficient DB queries, etc. And that should also run in public, of course. Mm. Uh, and we are now piggybacking on the uh, Bosch concourse just to get it started. But same questions come up. And sooner or later, we will need um, an, um, an account, a YAS account, uh, to set up the landscapes that also won't incur big uh, costs. But you need something. And I would like to see that in public. Uh, for now, we do it on one of our SAP internal uh, YAS accounts. And it's no problem to let it run there. But then it's hidden, right? And um, mm. so same question. And uh, we need to talk about that. That's that's uh, definitely true. And if then funding one day comes a problem, yeah. then uh, yeah, we need to find a solution for that <laughs> somehow. Um, this is kind of like a very short version of the spreadsheet about like proposed community uh, owned pipe like infrastructure resources. And this is like a really rough estimate. It doesn't contain a lot of the complexity, but it basically says, hey, there should be about four long lived testing, you know, CF deployment environments on GCP. Um, that is a large percentage of the total cost uh, of the budget. So. Uh, and, and that's because there's a variety of teams that have a permanent environment and some of them can be combined and some of them can't be. So my uh, thoughts were let's budget for four <laughs> and then we'll budget for a large number of Bosch lights that can be spun up and down and, and created and destroyed. Um, so it seems like maybe one of these four could be deployed now and used for a variety of, of things. If people want to do the work of deploying one of the four now, we could we could put Autoscaler on there, and we could put what you were talking about on there, Stefan, as well. Um, but we do need a larger plan forward. I think this could be the initial trial of a permanent one in the community. We can see how much leverage we can get out of that environment and how much we can use it for, and know that we've budgeted for several others as well, but not a large, large number of them. One for problem sure I... whether uh, we want to have a permanent one because what we do is uh, we um, push tons of uh, data into the database and run some queries and delete all the stuff again. So we thought more on a model uh, where we create a landscape, do our tests, and then shut it down again, and then maybe do that once per week or something like that. That should also bring the costs down. But it's too early for me to say a number or so. So we run it uh, first internally, and when we have some numbers, then I would join the discussion. Yeah, I prefer people spin up and down these infrastructures to save cost. In reality, when I looked at what the open source teams had been doing, almost none of them do that. Hmm. CAPI has eight long lived CF deployment permanent environments, some of which are very large. Okay. So the, it's a bit wasteful, but I think they're doing it because it's work to manage this spinning up and down. So like we made a plan for, we can't afford to do that, but you can afford to do some of that. And then other times we want environments spun up and down. Um, it seems like for auto scalar testing, that should be doable against a essentially okay, permanently deployed CFD, right? Cool. Like there should be a, a staging environment, like a, a CFD to environment, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, we also started with the assumption that we would somehow uh, bring up one and then uh, do our tests and bring them down. But uh, we can also switch to a permanent environment. I think we we require uh, a running CF. And if it's uh, there uh, between runs, that's also fine for us. That's the same model we essentially do internally. Uh, because there yeah, we already have our staging landscape, so we can certainly replicate that also for, for open source, sure. 
Okay, so maybe there's a proposal that we consume a small amount of our budget on a more or less permanent long-lived CFD environment that is automatically upgraded occasionally. Um, and it can be used to test things like basically things that sit on top of Cloud Foundry and the upgrade process for released versions. And it seems like CFD and notifications and there's a, sorry, um, autoscaler notifications. There's a few things, stra Stratos. There's the things that sit on top of Cloud Foundry and kind of want a more or less stable-ish Cloud Foundry that doesn't change all the time. If um, um, who's, uh, I, I think, Maybe the proposal to the TOC, and you all can let me know if this sounds good, is to ratify one of our environments for that and to build a longer term plan for what we do with the rest of that budget um, some other time, but use that to test autoscaler and anything else that anybody wants to volunteer to add that can be tested against a CFD deployment that matches that criteria, basically. Chip, what's the budgeting cycle? Is that on a calendar year basis? It, it's calendar year. I was actually going to help clarify with that with David. That David, that um, we don't have 2022 budget allocated yet. That that has not been locked. So um, think of the the numbers that we were looking at as uh, still proposed for next year. Um, you know, it, it's got to be balanced against revenue. Um, the other side, though, uh, is in between now and the end of 2021. Um, we had budgeted money for uh, CI specifically for the bionic stem cells and then therefore also CF deployment, right? So that, that was actually an overestimate, which is why I'm saying you've got no problem like starting to ramp things. Um, just don't expect that that top number is guaranteed to be the top number. You know, it might end up being that we got to squeeze down a little bit, um, you know, in, in a few months just in plans and like how things are managed. Is that helpful? Yeah, I think that's great because this is a CFD problem, as in if there's a CF long-lived CF deployment environment for testing upgrades, we can also leverage that for right. free to, to add autoscaler. So I think we're, we're fine there. We're, you're just saying that the numbers that I have in that spreadsheet, we have a much smaller version of those numbers actually currently available, right? which, which still fits this, but it wouldn't fit the bulk move of cloud okay. controller and routing yeah. and all of that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the way to look at it. Yep. Um, although, although to, to add to that, though, I think we'll probably have enough space, no problem, through the end of this year to ramp towards the goal. And then sometime in the next couple of months, I think we'll have locked in a at least planned budget for 2022 calendar, um, which basically you could look at as a ramp up to and then uh, sustain at that level next year. Great. Another so it sounds problem like this... besides budget, I'd see is ownership of such an environment. It's like I can imagine that uh, Silvestre doesn't like the idea of owning that just because he was the first, and like actually needs it because it's doing the testing for for his team. Um, so th there is no like in our list of proposed working groups, there's no natural fit working group that would take it. So it's a cross responsibility. Mm -hmm. Now, the, um, uh, or, or what the working group that owns CF deployment should own a long-lived permanent CF deployed upgraded. How else do you test CF deployment upgrade realistically with actual data that's upgrading through many versions, right? They will, they will thank us very much for giving them the responsibility for something that is a dependency for all other teams, though, right? So that's a difference. No, right? They, they definitely not, need such an environment to validate CFD. But owning the environment that basically everybody else needs is a different thing. No, only things that sit on top of Cloud Foundry need this, of which there are very few that are actually in the foundation that people care about, right? Okay. Like, this isn't going to be used by routing or CAPI or networking or Diego. Right. I mean, they, they would end up having uh, other environments to um, support their component integration. That, that's what you have in mind, David? Right, I was kind of imagining the A1 environment, Eric, from the very old days of Cloud Foundry at, at Pivotal and VMware was, there was this like long lived environment that the release integration team 
maintained as kind of a staging environment for testing a few things on top. Though, Jan, you are right. They offered it as a service and it was some work to offer it as a service mm -hmm. to others. And so I don't, I think we could green light it from a budgeting perspective and that working group should actually make the decision about whether they want to do the work or not, right? I mean, on the other hand, we've put the autoscaler in the API bucket. Yeah. So they would, they could co-own it together with the copy team and like the, if they anyhow need these kind of environments. So th there's probably space in the working group that the autoscaler will will probably land in to have something and share the responsibility just within that working group. So maybe that's also a good good starting point. That, that might be a that might be a good division of responsibilities there, especially if Cappy is already running a bunch of those environments anyway. And you know we'd want to get them to to winnow that down and to transfer some of them to uh, community infrastructure. Either way, that's a that's not a budgeting question, right? So I, I think yeah. we could still say it's a budget for it. It's acceptable mm -hmm. to have a permanent long lived environment for testing something like Autoscaler and other things on top. Which working group it falls into. Yeah. does not uh, doesn't uh, actually have to be solved. Though we're about to talk about working groups, so we can get to that. And we need a budget for the concourse that is running the tests, right? Well, well that, that's a good question. Uh, we could argue that we should use the same concourse. Ideally, there would be one or two concourses, not like 10 or 15 like there are now, right? In which case, we can piggyback on the existing concourse without significantly expanding its footprint. I'd say that depends. Like, as a like, if you would propose me as a working group lead for any working group, I'd say give me a concourse that is in the realm of our working group. We decide on when to update the version of concourse when it's not blocking anyone and stuff like that. So I wouldn't start like there's no working group for providing concourse as a service to others. That would be the alternative. But if that's not the case, I, I think we have to live with a concourse per working group we right. can talk about like maybe hibernating and like reducing costs in, in in that way but i think we shouldn't try to squeeze too many different teams that that have no regular sync and something like that onto the same congress instance sure absolutely i think that is really a budgeting question ultimately like how much are we going to shell out for Concourses. I'm also watching teams start to switch to GitHub Actions. So by the time we solve the budgeting problem for a concourse, maybe no one's using concourse. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> now we have a new problem that I don't understand. Um, okay, uh, it sounds like with the decision is, to restate the decision, it sounds like this is the job of the working group that owns Autoscaler. There is budget available if they would like to try if that working group would like to try to deploy a CFD for testing autoscaler and hopefully a variety of other things. And there's budget available to deploy a second concourse or collaborate with the team running the Bosch concourse and decide explicitly to share. Which of the Bosch concourses? There are five currently. <laughs> the open source community managed Bosch concourse ribbon, <laughs> the sixth one. <laughs> Cool. Should we move on agenda-wise? Well, I, have we actually got a conclusion of that agenda item? I think we are delegating that to the working group that owns the autoscaler, right? I mean, like, and we're just that's where it has to go. As soon as we get through the rest of the agenda, then we get because we need to check in on the proposed working group set, right? And then set a timeline for when we expect that the working groups to kick off. Mm. But we're, we're looking at not a lot of time, right? We're looking at like uh, the next month for starting these working groups. Okay, I just want to say that that somehow a little bit, uh, it's, it's burning uh, basically uh, the, the topic for us because um, yeah, we can't do any uh, releases right now. We know of uh, vulnerabilities and our dependencies and 
um, yeah, uh, would like or the ones that are already using the, the release unchanged to somehow profit from the work that we've already done, uh, but we can't release right now. Um, so I would I would really offer to to already set up this uh, concourse and set up uh, a deployment. And if the working group decides that it wants to do it another way, we can talk about modifying that. But I would really like to start as soon as possible. Sounds good for me. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, we are not talking about the huge part of the budget, right? So sounds really, really urgent. So from Fair. my point of view. I would say it's a pretty urgent thing as well. Okay, so we're saying we're going to green light the creation of possibly a separate concourse or if, if that if or a piggybacking onto the Bosch concourse with the discussion and a, a CF deployment for testing autoscaler that will be t owned long term by that working group where autoscaler lands. So try to deploy it in a way where it might be useful to other properties in that working group. But if not, we can fix it later if we need to. Mm -hmm. And you all are going to do the work of deploying it, right? Yeah. And testing out a scale against it. Great. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Last <clears throat> last item, since I see Felix actually joined, I want to see if uh, if Felix has enough credential permissions necessary in the IAS environments to bootstrap Sylvester or not, um, so that this can just be, you know, community members seeding the permissions necessary. Um, if if it that doesn't exist, uh, LF IT can do user management uh, on behalf of the project, but then that's that's where it'll stop. Yeah, hi there. So um, as I already, I believe I mentioned on the email thread as well, so I can do that right now. Um, so I have owner permission so I can add other people, but at some point also hear the request to the TOC or when the working groups are set up that we get those permissions somehow aligned to those working groups as well, right? So that maybe each working group has one or two people who have those necessary permissions to do so. Makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a technical lead job. But this sounds like different working groups are gonna share the same Google project. Is that true? Ideally not, maybe, if we can get away with it, we would have like three or four or five six working uh, Google projects under one billing account, um, but we can work that detail out later. Just from Pivotal's experience, it was really nice having separate Google projects for different purposes for analyzing spend. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. It's going to be a nightmare to track where all these CI created VMs are coming from otherwise. Yeah, that would be even a clearer separation than just having separate concourses makes sense. Okay. But then Felix won't be able to do it, right? Because then the project needs to be created. And so there's like a different onboarding story then. Yes. So regarding autoscaler, my understanding was now that um, for the urgent matters, we now just get started with a solution that will get reworked once these things are more clear. Do I get this right? Yeah, let's go for easy path. And then uh, in, in parallel, I'll, uh, unfortunately, Chris Clark's going to be out due to a family emergency through September, end of September. So he had the context in his head. Uh, I'm going to have to go hunt down within LF uh, how to get the new project added. But if you could bootstrap the process now, um, unblock Autoscaler, that'd be cool. And uh, again, in parallel, I'll, I'll see if I can sort this out. Sounds good. Cool. So uh, our next agenda item was um, one that Jan had actually provo uh, provided, reducing the number of Cloud Foundry GitHub orgs. Yeah, I've said that in there. Like, if we if we wanted to use GitHub projects for tracking anything, then it would be best to just be able to have projects in an org because nothing, no, no board can span orgs. And I think we've in the in the past seen projects that never left incubator just because they were Go projects. And 
that would be a breaking change. So mm. I, I don't know if there's if if this is a meaningful dis distinction. I mean, the Kubernetes community has something similar. Like the the service catalog is in Kubernetes dash six, so it is a different org. But like I I have never seen that much value in having separate orgs for for that. That's just why I came up with it. Like, I mean, I came up with it because if we want to have roadmaps, common roadmaps and share anything, the boundary is a GitHub org. Mm -hmm. Unless we but want to use tools like ZenHub or others, but. But but the attic is irrelevant. So it's really just, what do you want to do with the incubator, right? And the, and the answer is probably promote the projects that are actually real and maybe attic some of the other projects and maybe uh, I would argue there's still space for incubated projects. There just aren't very many projects that fall into that category, possibly none at the moment. David, you're, you're thinking of the, the current slate of projects that we're reorganizing, like which ones are incubating or not. Right, right. Now. I'm like, w w people aren't starting a lot of new projects in the open source Cloud Foundry. So there shouldn't be much in the incubator. We should be able to make decisions about the projects that are there, right? Eric, you wanted to do a, you were gonna suggest talking to the TOC at some point about an incubator cleanup strategy. Um, so we're fast forwarding a bit, but I think the goal, Jan, is, is, is a good goal. Projects that are really under active development should be in Cloud Foundry org, and we should be using GitHub projects. Mm -hmm. Would that raise the ceremony needed to start a new project? So I'm thinking of uh, CF performance tests. It was very easy to get this project on in, um, in the incubator. We will very soon need a second project. I have no problem to move uh, this project to uh, the Cloud Foundry org. Um, I would have problems if it's then much more difficult to get new projects. Uh, for instance, a landscape project to run the tests and configure them, et cetera. So, Something yeah, just technic technically, and, uh, yeah. technically, I think we five are um, are actually org admins, so technically, yeah, it's no I, problem at all. <laughs> I would <laughs> not like to misuse that. <laughs> no, for <laughs> no, it's like like what I'm what I'm like maybe I'm wrong and we should should not do that. But I was like I was proposing to actually incubate projects in the Cloud Foundry org even if there's a new one that starts incubation, why use a different org? Like, I mean, there's something else if you, if you really, if you already know, I'm just experimenting, I'm doing something that I'm going to throw away and then either do it right in the right org or not doing it, doing it at all because it, like, it has shown or proven impossible or un un unfeasible, whatever. Um, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm also wrong with that, but like the distinction is that hard cut that even like that, 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 that will also for potential future projects will be a burden they have to, to go over for maturing into, into that other space. I'm not sure if that's worth it. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that if we can um, make sure that any, uh, any new projects that are present in the CF GitHub org are, you know, they're clearly marked in terms of their maturity state or, or level of support in the community, mm -hmm. then, you know, that would seem to be preferable than having separate GitHub orgs and then having to migrate things or just not doing it because there's a minor benefit and, you know, it breaks things or, and you know, yeah. I, I even think in the, like on, on the repo level, it wasn't even used in that way, right? I think CFK's networking started directly in the Cloud Foundry org because it was an active project, right? That was requesting the repo. I, I think that was the real process, right? Um, which is okay or not. Like I, I, from my point of view, this is okay. It should start there. Just be marked as we are trying something out. Um, so. Great, I love it. We can use one org and we can tag repos or have like a stanza. Yeah. People do need to know the stability. Like mm -hmm. we, really repos fall into yeah. like three or four categories, like stable and maintained, addict, really active and changing, but but production quality and incubated yeah. or in incubation and potentially yeah. canceled, you know, beta. Um, so people need to know 
that's the, that's the only problem we're trying to solve. And I don't think we're using orgs 100% right to solve it. So if it's getting in our way, let's solve it a different way. Yeah. And honestly, we might not even really need the attic anymore that, now that you can archive GitHub repos. So yeah, so that's something that we do extensively. It Once it's gone, it, it's archived. There we are. It's You don't have to do any code changes or deal with anything for anyone that is using it for any reason or has a fork and suddenly that becomes a problem. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me. No, the, the, the next big question that comes out of that is who, who fancies starting cleaning? <laughs> well, I think we could ask um, Chris and Chip to help us at some point just merge Incubator into, yeah. like that's a bulk operation, but mm. <laughs> actually classifying each repo and making decisions about it, that's a hard problem. Nobody wants to do that. Well, mm. I mean, I, I feel like we'll have to do some of that as we um, continue elaborating the working group structure yes. because we'll need to know, I mean, Ideally, except for maybe some administrative repos that are clearly marked as such, each repo would belong to a single working group. Mm -hmm. I wonder if um, having some conventions even around like repo labels would make that, if that'd be a, a rich enough set of metadata for us to I make that assignment that, clear. I think that'd be a really good place to start. So I, I think for that one, we should probably come up with a series of, of labels that we think are appropriate for at least the first pass and ask the community to assign accordingly. And of course, there'll be those that don't have any of these labels on because they are abandoned where. So you're thinking of like, let's let's just start kind of grassroots as we form the working groups, maybe set yeah. some conventions around the labels to use. Yeah. And then we can see what the, the remainder is that will give us a sense of negative space in the yeah. technical assets. Okay. So I think, I think we're all good on that one then. Okay. So. Um, it sounds like we might need an action item to, to document maybe the initial proposed set of labels. Yeah. Uh, for working groups to use. Okay. What kind of labels do you mean, actually? I, are oh. there project uh, level labels in GitHub? I, I have never seen. They're, them. they're repo level labels. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah. Then cool. Yeah. So we're ta we're attacking Chip with the action item of merging the orgs. Um, and where someone's going to sign up to, I mean, this is really just a label that we add to each draft working group, right? Mm. Eric, you, you created the draft PRs. Do you mind owning the, generating a label for each one? That, that seems like the easiest problem of working groups is figuring out the label on each. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds good. I can, I can take that on, adding that to the working group um, information. Awesome. Would we want to do a bulk merge of CF Incubator into the CF org? I mean, would that potentially break things? I mean, I guess we'd find out if anyone cares. It doesn't break historically, right? Because all the redirects, like, mm -hmm. I think if we do a notice to CF dev, we tell our anybody, our vendor teams as well, like, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. And I really think, I really think like half the projects in Incubator should be moved somewhere, right? Either to Attic or Cloud Foundry. So like, we're in for a move, period. Yeah. I mean, there might be some um, Go code bases used as modules that could break, but that's also why we set up code.cloudfoundry.org as mm -hmm. the correct import path. Although I, I would imagine not everyone has adhered to that over the years. I mean, we can I think also if we do... ask. We can also ask the the maintainers of these repos to label them as move it or don't move it. 
mm. allow a veto or something like that. Yeah. We should definitely propose this, give some time for reactions. Yeah. Um, and probably have some strategy for opting out or opting out to be immediately migrated or something. If they see something, something uh, serious there, like, I don't know why you would have to rely on the URL. Go does, there might still be something that doesn't use the redirect. Yeah. I think, I think that sounds good to socialize this idea so that we don't surprise mm -hmm. people. Uh, I mean, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of urgency especially if we, we think there's a lot of cleanup to do in the incubator anyway. So we may as well like archive and, and uh, retire stuff before um, we move things. Yeah. I mean, even if it is more of a piecemeal basis, then I don't think that's, that's a terrible thing. But see what the community comes back with. Cool. That, that sounds reasonable to me. Um, I, I think, you know, we, we were touching on that just now, but I think we, with the consolidated organizational structure, we want to work out that uh, repo or project lifecycle process uh, from the TOC's perspective, you know, about like at, at what point would um, a proposed new project coming in from the larger community you know, gain some sort of official status to move into, I think what we're agreeing is just now the main CF GitHub org. I think that seems like the point at which a working group would either take on management of that or be formed to manage that project. Mm. Uh, and then um, I think setting, setting some expectations around governance for, you know, active, uh, maybe like high rate of churn development versus uh, some, you know, it's, some level of stability, which I think we have for a lot of components where yeah. you know, they're effectively in maintenance mode with, with a uh, very slow feature development versus uh, maybe a more formal retirement that could be archival. But. Hmm. Okay. But I, I don't think we need to work all that out now. That can be a, a subject of intensive debate at an, an upcoming <laughs> session <laughs> and then getting documents into the community repo for it. <laughs> okay cool so the continuation of working group formation i have seen a lot of stub prs going in yay uh yeah i, I think at this point i've i've made um uh at least places for us to start fleshing out the more and more of the details of the working groups um it seems like on the, the basis of the uh, delegation model between the TOCs and the working groups, the most important thing for us to do would be to identify who the leads mm. for the groups are. Um, but I, I also think that maybe the, the um, maybe a, a productive way to do that would be identifying also people who would certainly be approvers in those working groups as formulated and uh, then discussing with that group of people who might be best as the initial set of leads. So I think we could, we could be soliciting um, input from the community and from the current set of uh, outgoing project leads about um, you know, who they see as that approver base based on their, their knowledge of existing contributions and um, uh, desire and, and intention to work in that space as well. Um, I, I also think that, you know, uh, we, we do have an opportunity here to kind of fast track um, a lot more uh, shared ownership and leadership in these working groups. So, you know, this is our, our opportunity now to, uh, you know, if, if we had uh, concerns about, you know, maybe some individuals not uh, explicitly meeting, you know, the uh, contribution um, guidelines that we've set forth mm. via the the current rules well you know we've got an opportunity right now just to override some of those just to um you know, make sure that we have a broader base of leadership across the working groups
so then Eric's proposal is essentially, I think we talked about, he and I talked about this a little bit yesterday, to make it a little more concrete, we would tag, we'd ask the project leads to tag themselves on the PRs and everybody that's working basically in the area that they know about. Um, and then we all also help see if we're missing anybody, right? We wanna find gaps where, where people got dropped. And we try to basically select, then there's a process for selecting the leads from that group. And ideally, there's some nomination where people nominate each other or self-nominate for interest in the working in working group leadership roles. Then we have a process as the TOC to make a decision about which one or two of them end up in those leadership roles for each of them. Optimizing for you know multi-vendor leadership, optimizing for experience and demonstrated track record, and, and so on and so forth. Right? we have an opportunity to play this out for the first working group, right? So we can run a beta test of this, of the selection process by tagging everybody who's you know, involved in the, the, that working group, which is CF for Kates and CF deployment and CATS um, and so on. Uh, I think if you all are okay with that, we'll tag, Eric and I will ask some people that have been working on it to tag everybody that they know that's kind of worked on it recently. Mm -hmm. And then I think um, there's opportunities for other folks, even that aren't involved, like Eric said, to submit in their interest in leading that area. So I would, uh, and then I guess we'll have a decision relatively soon, right? Because we need to get this working group kicked off about who the leads are. Yep. Sounds good. Great. Um, presumably next week, even we at this time we could review the state of at least the CF deployment one. Um, I think that that is the interesting one. And then secondarily, we also should talk about how we're feeling about the division that Eric and I brought up as a suggestion for how working groups should be aligned to different areas. How, uh, it's probably worth mm -hmm. checking in today on how folks are feeling about that. I think if we don't. Re receive feedback or get opinions soon, we should just solidify it so we can move forward. But I'd be very interested in if anybody has any mixed feelings about it or concerns that, that they thought about since last week. No, it all seems like a, a good sensible approach to me. Uh, you know, I, I would say there's there's been, um, uh, some amount of concern from the Picado leadership about consolidating with the, the CF build packs. I think that they, um, they see some opportunities to collaborate with some other uh, companies or open source communities. And um, they, they have some concerns that they'll be um, uh, scared off by the CF baggage that they might have. Mm. So, um, you know, I, I know we've talked about also having the alternative perspective that one working group should own all of the build packs work to maintain continuity there and transition for CF environments. But we, you know, at the end of the day, the working groups are gonna to have to work with the people that wanna work in the areas. So I think that we'll have to work that one out as well. Um, yeah. I can definitely see the argument of, honestly, it might even just be more expedient to um, just take Picado's current structure and make it a working group because I mean, they've already got their own little universe of governance um, inside of that. That's actually um, a good point about consolidation that is in an entirely separate GitHub org. You know, if we're talking about consolidating everything into Cloud Foundry, well, we, we may not want to force that on them. <laughs> mm. But certainly reducing the number of extraneous GitHub works is, is valuable. <laughs> So if we have uh, the Paquetto side as its own working group, where what happens with the CF build packs? Do they become a working group of their own? I think there's there's two options. They could become a what would be a very small working group, or they could get consolidated into one of the runtime mm -hmm. uh, working groups. And 
you know, the latter might be easier um, in terms of, you know, keeping things relatively consolidated in terms of working group structure for the time being. Um, I, I think that uh, Emily had said that making sure that people were contributing wouldn't be a problem. Uh, they were they were more concerned with the um, governance dynamics uh, as they try to um, effectively make sure that Piketo can stand on its own as a project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. I would have hoped that this uh, could actually lead to just just to the build packs working group only working on Piketo build packs. So right. Yeah. I, I'm also a bit. I, I don't like this idea of uh, splitting yeah. up because in the end of the day, it uh, probably prolongs the coexistence of the two different things without having a plan how to move from one to the yeah. other. I mean, yeah. the working group could say, uh, we yeah. do not invest anymore in the old one and uh, we see the future in the Paketo build packs, but uh, I think it's then also in the responsibility of this working group to come up with a plan how this can happen. and. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what, what about we, we take the Build Packs working group as the second beta that we run after the CFD one, and we actually invite some people from, from that potential working group mm. and talk with them as a, mm. like, as a TOC with the, with the working I mean, I agree. If, if we form a working group where they don't want to participate in, um, that doesn't help. But um, then let's see who can convince the other, or if we can agree on disagreeing and moving forward with one or the other solution. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to see a, a convergence, definitely. No, I, I half suspect that it's going to be not the classic build packs that uh, things go in the direction of there, but... Uh, we do want to keep that, you know, the differences as minimal as possible for the shortest space of time till we have sort of the one true way. Not even the differences, is, uh, but okay, that's really a topic for the build tech. I, I yeah, don't see I the think we, we're going to need problem. to pull them in and, and talk yeah, to them about exactly. the details. Yeah, of this. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. continues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like a, an, a case of something like Osbappi where there's a separate, where it's like a thing that really is outside of Cloud Foundry in a lot of ways and has its own governance structures. And we can either separate those things into their own working groups, or we can say that they must be a Cloud Foundry led in the Cloud Foundry way, or we can say you're in a working group, but you're allowed to have a different leadership structure for that project. There are mm -hmm. options here. Um, I'm with you all though. Eric and I have been talking back and forth. <laughs> uh, a fair amount with them and they are really uh, they are emily is really tough on what she wants and so we have to decide together with her what we're going to do yeah yeah i mean an another option could be like well we could again this this might be an expedient option if not the long-term one like let them run independent as a piquet thing for you know until the end of the year if if that uh engagement that they're hoping to garner doesn't happen then we could say well okay now uh that didn't work. So let's reorganize to consolidate the build pack stuff there. So, but I, I think that's, again, something we could talk to them about um, in this forum as well. Um, we should probably look to invite them along pretty soon, I think on this one. Um, next week? Would that be too soon? That would be the last chance before my vacation for me to to participate, but yeah. that doesn't mean it can't be later. So. That's great. Let's do it next week. Let's hope to get their input and a CF deployment like ratified more. Um, okay. And a check-in on how the rest of the groups are feeling to see if there's any other contention. I mean, in theory, we could ratify the proposed set of working groups and projects next week, and then asynchronously fill out the contributors and leaders mm. later election process, right? Like, just like, um, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm proposing to send a broadcast message on CF Dev, pointing out the working group structure and pointing people to the, um, the draft PRs. Yeah. Or, 
um, the working group charters and, and soliciting input on participants. Yeah. Sounds okay. good. I'll do it. I'll do that um, in the next day or so. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. Timing wise, if you went for Thursday, that will be after the governance keynote. Oh yeah. Do you want to do you want to coordinate that with with your keynote, Lee? Um, yeah, so that, that's going to be, oh I'll have to do time zone. I'll do time zone okay. maths and I'll let you know. Okay, sure. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I'm, <laughs> I've got it on my schedule for Summit anyway. So <laughs> I think it's probably first thing on Thursday. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, in that case, I can, I can refer to um, what you've mentioned there. Cool. Awesome. I'll probably do some softer um, uh, socialization of those. Uh, I actually, uh, I, I did cancel the runtime PMC meeting for today in favor of the unconference um, for Summit, but I pointed people at the uh, entire proposed working group structure and then the uh, draft PRs for the specific working groups that would be most relevant to that group. So there's already, I've already been doing some soft socialization of, of those PRs. Okay, cool. So, uh, David, Eric, uh, do I do you either or both of you want to um, chat to Emily uh, to see about next week as you are already in contact? Yep. Absolutely. We'll just make sure she can make it uh, to next week's meeting unless she's on vacation. I think we'll be okay. Cool. Um, I believe we've got to the end of the agenda. So um, I propose that we all go in five minutes back and uh, have a relax before summit starts. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Brilliant. All right. Thanks all. Wait, wait, hang on, oh. hang on. Oh. I made it. I made some updates to the roles. PR. Oh, yeah. Oh, Eric and I, I took his feedback. He was all nitpicky about like 12 different things. And we, we agreed to do something a little bit different. We created another role that's for a part-time contributor versus like really a more serious contributor versus an approver. So we kind of tried to separate it out. So there was a, like a really low overhead role, mm -hmm. which is, I think we called member. So it was like member, contributor, and approver as the three levels. Um, please take a look at it. It is, you might be like, no, 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 forget this. I've requested approve, a re-review from all of you. Um, possibly not Lee, I need to fix that because okay. you weren't like in the GitHub org or whatever. But anyway, we'll make sure I get a review from you as well. Because this is a contentious change. You might say that's too many roles or you might say, thank goodness someone finally added that role. No, no. I, I would I'm, love to get this ratified. I'm all about getting people in at the lowest possible level and then ratcheting them up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Exactly, that's what we were thinking. Excellent. Yeah, that, okay, that cool. sounds good to me. Look so for my next review then, Lee. I'll, I'll like actually tag you on the GitHub this time because I think I know how to do that. <laughs> and feel free to make suggestions. I just want to get this accepted this week because it's really hard to have conversations with people about roles in the working groups yes. when there's not an approved set of <laughs> roles. Yeah. Cool. All right. I'll keep my eyes peeled for that one then. So thank you very much, all. Enjoy summit and we'll keep in touch. Bye, Lee. See you. Bye. Thank you.